faith works. This is the message of James, that we, in our own ability, cannot stand in the face of adversity. We could never find the strength to trust without faith because we don't have the capability to see above the trials that we meet, to keep our eyes focused on the King while counting the situation we are currently experiencing as joy. This is the message of James. Faith works. Church, have you, have you opened up your Bible? four. Sorry, turn to turn my microphone on here. I love it when we are able to go unplugged a little bit. Cody and the cobblestones is what they're called. You guys can find them uh, somewhere. I love it when we're able to pull out the cajon. That's always a very interesting instrument. People who play that are always talented. I, uh, uh, it's one of the only kind of uh, you know, rhythm instruments that I've ever kind of been able to get away with playing. I'm always afraid, well, I'm not going to get into that, but uh, it's, a, it's an instrument you sit on, so that has microphones inside of it, so I'm always afraid. They'll be like, ah, be careful. You're not going to be able to get away with anything on that. Um, if you'll turn to James chapter 4, we have been uh, walking through that actually last, uh, um, last, this weekend, we were able to take some time uh, to uh, get away, my wife and I, to celebrate her birthday. It's not her birthday yet. Her birthday is in October. Uh, kind of a, a bigger birthday, though. It's not, you know, it's a bigger birthday. Starts with a four, and I'm just saying, it's, it's, it's coming right around the corner here. So uh, somehow she seems to get more beautiful every year, and I look like this. So it's very, uh, it's very frustrating to me that that's the way that it works out. But we were able to get up to Huntsville for a few days and just kind of relax. Um, grateful for that opportunity and grateful to be back here this morning. So we have been uh, kind of diving in. You, hopefully you have a handout if, if you came in or you can follow along on the U version. Please be praying uh, for our congregation. Everybody seems there's, there's some sort of a bug going around and everybody seems to be grabbing it right now. So just pray that everybody gets better uh, and that we can all come together here pretty soon. Uh, James has been a, a great study for us. I believe that as we've been walking through it, it's such a book of application. We talk about this every week, but one of the things that I love about the book of James is that uh, he, he talks about faith and he talks about works, and not as, as those two things being a juxtaposition, right? They're not, they're not fighting each other, but because of our faith, there are works that we should naturally do, and then there are works that God calls us to do. There are ways that he calls us to challenge ourselves to go deeper, to be more holy, to start to look different than we did before. And oftentimes, that isn't something that just happens. That's something that we really need to work on. And last week, Pastor Gary spoke to us, and um, you know he ended with the statement, Humility is key. Humility is key. You know, it's one of those things, I think, when, you, when everybody loves to talk about humility, right? They love to talk about how we can forget things for ourselves and lift uh, others. But it, although it's not a natural thing, I believe it is something that God has called us to do. And you think about that. Our, our fallen nature, right? We're, we're all primarily focused on our needs, and I think some of that is, you know, for like survival, right? Think about it when, when you're a baby. I'm not sure if many of us remember that, but we may know some babies, right? And so when you're a baby, babies don't really care much about anyone else <laughs> that's going on around them, right? They're like, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I'm tired, right? Whatever it is, it's, it's, it's all about, and so, and we grow through that, and yet I still think beyond the preservation aspect of that, that there's still kind of this me mentality that has a tendency to run through our lives, even when we're doing something for other people, right? You can find that a lot. Well, I do this. I, I do this work with children or I do this work with the homeless because it makes me feel good. 
right? right? So even in that, even in the good stuff, there can still be a line of selfishness. Now, again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with us feeling good about doing the things that God's told us to do, but what are our priorities? We're starting this week with the same verse that we ended last week with. And I think as James has walked us up to this point, uh, Pastor Gary told us last week, it, the key is humility. And then James moves into this next section where he's talking about what true humility looks like and what happens when we begin to see those things in our life, what our, what our, our hearts start to look like, what our actions start to look like. Often we equate humility with being humiliated. Anyone ever had that situation happen? No, I'm the only one. I'm the only one who's ever been humiliated in this room. I mean, often. It happens to me often. And it's usually my fault, right? But, and so we have a negative connotation sometimes to that. Because we feel like being humiliated is putting us down and making us feel worse. But actually, uh, Miriam Webster says that, um, that humility is freedom from pride or arrogance. C.S. Lewis said it like this. It's not about thinking less of yourself, just thinking of yourself less, Right? So it's not this, this uh, humility that we put on like, oh, woe is me, I'm so bad, you're so good. And we do that sometimes, we're like, oh, I'm just awful, and then we're looking up to see who's looking at us. Is anybody noticing how humble I am, right? It's not, about, it's not about that, it's about putting away arrogance, it's about putting away pride and thinking of God and others and then ourselves. So here's in the outline, you can go to your U versions if you want to follow along live. You can just put in 35016. That should pull it up if, you're, um, if your location is not enabled. Number one is this. Humility is a proper response to a proper view of God. Here's what I want to do. I want us to read James chapter 4. Verses 10 through 17, that's just the section uh, that we're going to look at. And we're going to, uh, again, start with, start with the end, right? We're going to start where we ended last week. James chapter uh, 4, 10 says, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Do not speak evil against another brother. I'm sorry, one another brothers. The, the one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the law. And judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is only one lawgiver and judge, he who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time, then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it for him, it is sin. Let's pray this morning. Jesus, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the opportunity to examine ourselves, even when that is painful. Uh, God, help us to... See the areas that we need to work on and to work on them and to take the steps that are going to bring us closer to you. Help us to learn this morning about humility. Uh, we love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Number one, humility is a proper response to a proper view of God. Oftentimes, the reason that we don't have that response is because we don't have a proper view of God. We don't have a, a prop, we have not put God where he needs to be either in our heart or in our mind. People who are humble are aware of their desperate position. We are in desperate need, naturally, we are in desperate need of God. The Bible tells us that we are separated from him and so when we begin to recognize our need, the natural response to that 
is going to be that of humility. Not of necessarily a woe is me type situation, but is gonna be that, uh, that humility that comes from being, having a freedom from pride or arrogance because we know we can't do it, right? We know that we can't be the ones to save ourselves. We know that we can't be the ones to make ourselves holy. That's not possible, no matter how hard we work. Now listen, we can work hard enough to look holy, right? We can, look hard, we can work hard enough to make it appear or that in certain situations we can do the right thing or we can be uh, the right way. But the truth of the matter is the depth of that comes only from God. People who are humble, they're aware of their desperate position. It's a it's it, humility in the biblical sense of the word. It's to disregard our concern about our privilege or our rank. And that's so like countercultural to what we're what we're told to do today, right? It's make your own way and and climb the ladder and whether it be social ladder or, or ladder at work or whatever that looks like, you know, just look out for number one, look out for ourselves. And, and humility says the exact opposite of that. It's, it's disregarding all of that to live our life in service of Jesus first and then of others. So oftentimes I think we get this backwards. We believe that serving others and then, and then we kind of put Jesus after that. Because let's be honest, when we serve other people, it's easier to get recognition, isn't it? It just is. Because other people may see you do that or the people you serve may say, hey, thanks for doing that. And so that seems to be an area that, that we'll pull towards. But what we need to do is make sure that we're putting these priorities right in our life. We need to be serving God first, in humility. Why? Because Jesus was the one who served us. Philippians, if you turn backwards in your Bible, just a couple books, you will find Philippians chapter 2, which is, if you've never read Philippians, man, read it and, and highlight just all of chapter 2. It's a great, it's a great portion of scripture, but they actually, the, the portion that we're going to be reading, uh, some of it, is called the kenosis passage, which is the idea of Jesus emptying himself for you and for me. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 8 is what I'm going to read to you if you want to follow along. Uh, have this, uh, that's there verse five. Who, the, uh, though, who was not in the form of God. We're talking about Jesus here, right? Jesus who came in fashion as a man, the Bible tells us here in these, uh, in these verses. Who Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself. Your version may say humbled himself to be taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Man, when we have a proper view of what God has done for us, we're gonna start to realize our need and we're gonna start to find this place of, of gratitude that says, God, I can't do it on my own. It isn't all about me. I'm not the main character of my story. You are. We're all in his story. See what I did with that? His story. Uh, you're welcome, right? We are all characters in that, but Jesus is the main character. So we have to stop thinking about putting ourselves first and put Jesus first. And then what did Jesus do? Jesus put God, the Father, first. And then he served others in humility. And if there is one person throughout all of human history that does not have a reason to be humble, it's Jesus, right? He walks the walk and talks the talk on water, right? So you're talking about a guy who literally, like we all can say whatever we want to say, but at the end of the day, we're sinners. He wasn't. He wasn't. Like he could literally brag about whatever he wanted. And it would be accurate, and he'd be worthy of that, but he doesn't. 
In humility, he comes and he serves. When we recognize what Christ has done for us, our natural response should be humility and praise. God, I'm not worthy. God, you are worthy. Let me give you all the honor. Number two is this in your outline this morning. Humility changes how I view and value others. This one might hurt. This one might sting a bit, okay? We just got, we have to take a minute to look at it. Humility is going to change how I view, excuse me, and value other people. Oftentimes, I think we do this somewhat unintentionally. Sometimes we do it on purpose. But there's this idea, I am better than. Or, I'm not as bad as. And there comes this judgment, which we're going to talk about in a minute, how we put ourselves in that place of, of judge, as we read earlier in this, in this passage. And God says, that's not your job. You're supposed to be a doer, not a judger. Stop being so judgy, right? Don't worry about other people. Worry about yourself. Have you seen that video of the little, of the little girl trying to put her seatbelt on and the dad's asking her if she needs help? And she's like, she's like, I, I got, she's a little baby. She's like, I got, I got, you worry about yourself. You worry about yourself, she says to her father. She's trying to put it on. It's my baby voice. Um, but it was, it's hilarious. Uh, verses 11 through 12 really give us this picture. Do not speak evil against one another, brothers. The one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you're not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is only one lawgiver and judge, he who is able to save and destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? Who are we? And sometimes we can look and get lost in the minutia of that and be like, well, truly, you know, they were just arrested for blah, 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 right? And so we kind of get into that place where that hasn't happened to me yet, right? All right, this isn't, this isn't where I'm at. The idea here is, is speaking badly about other people, about, about recognizing that in humility, I'm going to realize that I'm not better than anybody else and that nobody else is better than me. Sometimes I think we get lost in either side of that coin. We can feel like, man, I'm just such a lost cause, <laughs> Right, And we have to realize we are all on an even playing field when it comes to sin. And we're on the losing team. We are all guilty of that. We all find ourselves in need of God's grace. And that humility needs to come through us as we act towards others. Can I say this, church? Especially towards other believers. Not that we shouldn't do it to people that aren't believers, but man, as brothers and sisters in Christ, sometimes we're, we're the meanest to each other, right? Because we look at lost people and we're like, oh, they're lost, so I don't expect lost people to act like saved people. And that's true. We should do that. But then we walk with, with people who are Christ followers with us, and we ignore the sin in our own life. We ignore that plank sticking out of our eye. And we say to that life group leader or about that person who goes to this and that, I see this in your life. And instead of challenging and loving and, and walking alongside, we begin to judge. We begin to talk badly. And you know how we do that as Christians? Hey, hey, I've got a prayer request. Uh, I need you to pray for me about so-and-so, right? This is, and then we get into that whole thing and we're like, yeah, you know, that Heath Plunkett, I, did, I talked about this on Wednesday. I can use Heath because he's, he's a great friend of mine. But man, I can't stand that guy. You know, he is just, he smells, uh, you know, he's, he's mean. Uh, he never does what he says he's gonna do, right? But so, so, let's, so let's just pray for him. Bless his heart, right? Bless his heart, right? right? In that, you're, you kind of get some of those, only two of those things are true. He always does what he says. Um, but uh, <laughs> so the idea is, that we try to mask it in holiness. And yet still what we're doing is we're elevating ourselves. We're elevating ourselves to feel better because we feel like for some reason we have to mine material from other people to build ourselves up. We're looking at the wrong source. Jesus, our relationship with God, 
should be where we find the foundation of who we are. We can be, God says it in verse, verse 10 here, you be humble, I will exalt you. Stop trying to do it yourself. You're bad at it, right? Let me do it. I'm better at it than you are. But we still have this idea of struggling with criticizing or speaking evil towards other people. And it's easy to criticize other people, right? It's like Monday morning quarterbacking, sitting back in the chair. I don't know why they did that. Why did they run that play? You know, why did, why did Saban do that? Oh, no, don't, don't second guess Saban, but I'm just saying, right? Why this coach did that? You know, I don't understand. Yet we couldn't run a single play on that field, right? I would die. I died trying to walk to my seat with Gary because we were like back up in the thing. And he's like, no, a couple more stories. And I'm like, Gary, I need a minute, Gary, right? But yet it's easy for me to criticize and judge and do all of that. It's easy for us to get to that place. But it's not Christ-like. It's not humble. And we have to think about what destructive speech and criticism look like. It could be complaining about other people, it's certainly about like, uh, like actually verbally attacking somebody, right? And, and we know who we are if we do that, <clears throat> right? How about gossip, slander, lying about somebody, saying something that you know isn't true? All of it's led by arrogance. And then interestingly enough, God moves on to tell us in that, look, when you do that, you're judging the law. You're, or you're being a judge, and you're not, you haven't been, that's not your role. God is the judge, period, exclamation mark, hashtag, God is the judge, not us. He determines what's just and what is unjust. He determines what's sinful and what is good. The idea of judgment brings with it an idea of us determining on our own, in our own mind, how another person should live or believe, and that is not our job. God has perfectly defined those things, and it is perfect just the way it is. God doesn't need our help here. Also, God doesn't need our help when we judge ourselves. Hold everybody to that same standard. My wife and I were talking about that the last couple days, about that consistency of saying I'm not gonna judge others by their actions and, and myself by my intentions. I'm gonna put those two things together and say I'm gonna hold everybody to that same standard, which is a biblical standard. We don't need to pronounce judgment on someone any further than what God has already established. What we need to do is love each other. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second, most important, is love your neighbor as yourself. That's our job. So no judgy, lovey, no judgy, right? We get, we're moving towards that in our hearts, in our minds. Number three, because I know we're almost done here. Number three, humility changes how I approach the future Humility should change how we approach the future. Now, this is interesting here because this is 13 through 17, and it kind of gives us a story. I'm not going to read it because of time. I'm not going to read it again because of time, but um, it kind of gives us a story of what seems to be a very enterprising individual who says, no, we're going to go here. We're going to live here. We're going to make some money. We're going to plan. We're going to do this. And I don't think the plans are the problem here. I think it's, it's the heart behind it. On the surface, there's nothing wrong with these plans. They've thought it through, but there's no mention of God in it. There's no mention of humbling ourselves to the plan of what God might have us do. Humility changes our plans into obedience. Anyone ever heard that statement, you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans, right? How many people have really ended up, and may, look, maybe it's happened, but have really ended up in the place that they planned on being, right? God, it's, it's, and again, some of that is because of, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> pardon, <clears throat> um, some of that is because of our own decisions, right? Maybe we've made bad decisions that have led us to a different place. I, I get that. 
But oftentimes, when we're willing to submit ourselves to God, we're going to end up going in a different direction than we thought we would be going. That's not saying we don't make plans, folks, okay? I have a lot of, hey, man, I'll just, this, uh, for some reason, I think of like a California surfer dude when I say, hey, bro, I'm just going to go with it, man, you know? Is that what they, I've never, I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? Like, we're just going to go with the flow, bro. Like, wherever, no, like we need to make plans. We need to plan, right? We want to be financially responsible for our families, for ourselves. We need to do all that kind of stuff. So God, I don't think God's saying that plans are wrong, but we make plans. We want to have those be God-given plans to, to seek godly advice, to look at scripture and to say, God, what, is, what should my next step be? How do I move forward in the midst of your will? And that takes humility. Right? That takes the, I just scared Mark. Mark was back and I goes, what's happening with the sound system? Right? That takes, that takes humility. Why? Because it says, I don't know what's best, God, you do. And it means that we need to apply that across all areas of, of, my, of your life, right? God, I'll, I'll trust you with my salvation. God, I'll trust you with my safety, but not with my pocketbook, right? I got that. I got that taken care of. Or God, I'll trust you with all of these other things, but I'm not gonna trust you with my kids. That's a hard one. That was a hard one for me, right? Because you're like, what's the most precious thing that I have outside of my relationship with God and my wife, my children? And you feel that responsibility to protect but you got to be able to go, God, it's all yours. It's all yours. And so am I humble enough to approach the future in a way that puts me in submission to you? Understanding that even if I've mapped my life out in a godly way, if I've looked towards other counselors and, and looked towards your word and prayed over it, that all of that might be disrupted. That's not like the magic key to getting exactly what we're planning for. I know many people who have walked through super difficult days even after going through all of those steps in a biblical, precise manner. And what, is, what does he say here? He says, but we should say, if the Lord wills. I'm gonna make these plans, God. I've sought your face, and if you will, this is what's gonna happen. You know what I found with this? That this kind of a statement, God, if you let your will, but God, we pray for whatever. Heath's toenail. Heath's got an ingrown toenail. So we're gonna, I'm picking on Heath today, but Heath's got an ingrown toenail. So we're gonna pray for Heath's toenail. Lord, we pray for healing. But you know, it, in your will, God, if, if it be your will, you know, as Christians, we kind of use that as a CYB moment. You know what I mean? Like, a, we're going to cover all bases there, just in case you don't do it, God. Because why? Because I really don't trust you. And instead, I'm going to say, if it's in your will, so that if it doesn't happen, I still got an out. I still have a way to be like, nah, I said if it was in your will, clearly it wasn't. So, sorry, dude, you know, you're going to have to change shoes or something. I don't know what we're going to tell you. What it is, is it's a way that we use to cover up the fact that we really don't trust God to do what we've prayed about him doing. And that hurts a little bit. We need to understand that in humility, God has called us to believe and that when we move forward without God in the center of our plans, James says all such boasting is evil. It's saying that we're boasting in our plans when the Bible tells us that we should boast in Christ alone. What I'm asking us to do today is to look to the future with humility and surrender. Let God guide our decisions about who we date, teenagers, some adults, about who we date, about who we marry, about what job or career we choose, about how we plan our year, our months, our weeks, our days. Seek God in the middle of this. And if those plans change, that we can stand still knowing that God is in control and that all things work together for good for those that what? Love him and are called according to his purpose. That's the proper use, by the way, of this type of, of verse is to say, God, I've humbly sought you and that even when things in my life don't go the way that I've planned, you're going to be honored and in humility, I'm gonna be lifted up because 
I have come in humility, looking towards the future with my plans. That's, humility is not just a virtue, it's a lifestyle. And we have to come, and again, it's hard. Sometimes we'll move in and out of that, right? We'll be, there'll be times where we're humbly seeking God's faith, face in all of these things, and then there'll be times where we've just grabbed the wheel back from him, right? One of those moments where like, nope, you're, we're going in a direction I don't want to go. But I think the goal for us is to step more and more towards this, this consistent humility of our lives, the recognition of pride and arrogance and push that to the side and say, God, I'm not worthy of any of it. You alone are worthy. So we give him praise and we allow him to lift up, to tear down, to clear the path before us and to set us on the road that's gonna give him the most glory. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes this morning. We always have the opportunity for response. Just like the book of James says, if not, then we have this knowledge and we haven't done anything with it. So maybe this morning you're here and you say, you know what? I struggle. Maybe you'd say this morning, I'm a Christ follower, but I struggle when it comes to humility. I struggle when it comes to taking myself out of the equation. And I'm just going to be honest this morning right? That that's, I understand that's prideful. And what I'm going to ask you to do, pastor, is just pray that God remove that pride and allow me to embrace humility as a Christ follower. If that's you this morning, just pop your hand up. No one's looking around. I'm just going to pray over you. Amen. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, you know what? I am that first point that we talked about. Humility being, being my natural response to a proper view of who God is. Maybe, maybe you don't have a proper view of who God is. Maybe you'd say this morning, I have never had, there hasn't been a time or a place where I've trusted Jesus and asked him to forgive me and take my sin away from me. No one's looking around. Here's, here's what we're gonna do. If that's you this morning, I'm not gonna call you out. I'm not gonna make you come forward. I'm just gonna pray in a minute. But if that's you, just pop your hand up so I know who's praying with me this morning. Amen. If that's you at home as you're watching after, later when this is posted online, the Bible says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. We can't have a proper view of God without having a proper relationship with God. And this is how God has given us that ability. So this morning, I'm just gonna pray. And you can pray along with me. Pray in your heart. You pray it out loud. A prayer of submission recognizing who Jesus is in humility, saying, I can't save myself, but I believe, Jesus, that you can. Something like this. Jesus, I believe that you died on a cross for my sin and that only you could pay that price. And not only that, but after you paid the price, you rose in victory. And I ask that you just forgive me for all of my pride, for all of my arrogance, for all of my sin, that you would separate it from me. And that, God, this morning, I wouldn't stand in that pride a moment longer, but that I would humble myself and I would follow after you as my Lord, as my leader, as my shepherd. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll keep our heads bowed and we'll pray for that other group as well. If you prayed that prayer this morning for the very first time, let us know so we can connect with you. The first group we were talking about, man, pride can be really difficult sometimes. It can creep up in our lives and it can be something that's hard for us to push ourselves away from. So this morning, let me pray for those of us, myself included, that can struggle. Jesus, help us who've acknowledged here in this place, maybe afterwards as we've watched this sermon, that pride can be really difficult and it's a, and it's a struggle for us. Not because we want to be, but because the, those are the things that we struggle with. So God, I, I pray that you would help each of us to remember that we are fully loved, that we are fully children of the King, but that has nothing to do with us and everything to do with you. 
that without you, we are lost, paupers uh, on the street, homeless and familyless, and yet you have adopted us into your family and called us sons and daughters. And that we can't deserve it, and we can't earn it ourselves, but that's why you came and you died for us. And so in that, help us to take that humility and to apply it across our lives so that we can submit ourselves to your leadership in every area. And God, I also pray that you would help us in humility to love others the way that you did. Thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for emptying yourself taking on the form of a servant, of a human, then humbling yourself on the cross to die for for our sins. We give you praise for that. Help us to follow in your footsteps. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand with us as we sing.